Before I start this video, I'm going to mention that I have a Patreon, and if you want to support me there, please look in the description for a link. Anyway, I was looking around on Craigslist, and I had found someone selling a Power Mac G4, along with the monitor. Specifically, this monitor, the Apple Studio Display. As you can see, the hinge on this monitor has broken off. Unfortunately, during transport, I think I bent the stand the wrong way, or did something wrong, and snapped the hinge. So, luckily I was able to source a replacement hinge, so we're going to open up this monitor and throw this in there. So before I get to the monitor, I just want to show off the computer. This computer is a Power Mac G4, 867 megahertz. Like I said, I picked this up along with the monitor off of Craigslist for actually way less than it should be. So I actually gave the guy a bit more money than he had listed on Craigslist just because this is definitely worth more than what he was selling it for. Um, this machine is actually pretty cool. It's got a zip drive in it. And interestingly, I was at a thrift store and managed to find a zip drive for a PC. So I did buy it to buy some zip disks. This is a zip 250 drive, and so is the one that I found at a thrift store. So maybe in another video, I'll message some zip disks and see if we can copy files between this machine and the PC. Anyway, back to the monitor. Okay, I know this video is supposed to be about the monitor, but I just really want to show something off about this computer here. So, one thing I really love about this Power Mac is just how easy it is to work on. I don't know what made Apple change their minds about, you know, making computers actually work on a bowl. Like, look how easy this is to work on. Just open it up like that. Here are the hard drives right here. Here's the zip drive, the CD drive, the video card, and even this, I think, SCSI card are just easily changeable. And, like, I don't know. I just love this, this design. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to show that off, so let's get to the monitor now and replace the hinge on it. And then I will show off this computer connected to that monitor, and then I'll probably show off that monitor connected to another machine just to show you that I can do that. Okay, and now on to the monitor. First things first, we get out our trusty iFixit kit, I'm not sponsored, and we find our two millimeter hex bit. And there are just some screws here, 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 and here we need to take out. There we go. I'm happy I have this iFixit kit because I didn't have a 2mm bit and I managed to open this up using a different bit. I think I managed to just sort of jam like a Torx 8, I think, into these screws. Though, I don't really like doing that since not, that's not really the actual the correct size and you know I don't want to strip anything so happy I finally have the correct size to get all these screws out properly. This one and then one more over here. Luckily since we're just replacing the hinge we don't have to really do too much of a disassembly. Mostly just take this back panel off, unscrew the hinge, put the new one on, and put everything back. So, this plastic piece comes off. I'm just going to lean it against here because I don't have to take the whole cable out through it or anything. And then this panel now should come apart. Give me access to the hinge. There we go. It's got to pop. There we go. It's got to pop off some clips to get this part off. And now we can see the inside of the monitor, and all we need to do is take off this part right here. We we'll don't have to take off anything else. So now I need a normal Phillips screwdriver, it looks like. I can use that fixie kit for that, but I'm just going to go get a normal screwdriver and take out the screws. Yep. So I really don't know how I actually managed to break this hinge. What I think happened was I think that I did just like bend the stand too much in one direction or something and snap the metal. I mean I don't know how old this thing was or how brittle the metal on these hinges are so I am really surprised it broke but I guess I'm happy that I was able to find another one so let me take the old one out. Plop the new one 
down where it went. Assuming I put it in the correct direction, which is that way. It's a little notch pointing downwards. And then let's put all the screws back in. Once this is screwed back together, we have to then reattach the actual stand to this hinge. And then I can use the monitor without having to, you know, like lean it up against something in kind of an awkward way. I don't really want to admit how much money I spent on this hinge, but all I'll say is I spent more money on this hinge than I spent on the actual monitor and computer combined off of Craigslist. So I guess one thing I could have done was, you know, maybe I could have bought like a whole other one of these monitors, but like I didn't want to do that because the monitor works and the only thing that was broken was the hinge and then I have two monitors or if I wanted to get rid of one, most places will charge you to recycle monitors and I don't know, I figured it was just better to fix this one than to get another one. So let's screw the whole monitor itself back together and then I will get the stand and put that on. There we go. Put a bit back in. Screw, 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 screw. Put this on here. And finally, this. So one thing about this monitor is that it uses a special connector called ADC, or Apple Display Connector. As you may notice, there's only one wire coming out of the monitor. So this wire carries the power, the DVI signal, and even the USB signal for these two USB ports. Okay, so with the monitor back together, we can put the stand back on so we can prop it up properly. So, stand is these two plastic pieces, one of which goes over like that, and the other goes like this, and then screws in, and I think actually I can route the cable through the stand like that. The screws for that I put aside earlier so I wouldn't lose them to get them back. And then this goes onto the little part, the part that broke, that, and then I can screw this in using the same 2 millimeter driver. So now, hopefully once I put the stand back on, I don't break it again, because I don't want to have to get another hinge, because that would be embarrassing. I guess maybe I need to learn how to properly use this hinge, because maybe that's what happened, how I broke it was I pushed it too far to one direction or something, I honestly don't know. But it is nice to have it fixed and actually working again. So, there we go. I can actually stand the monitor up properly now that has a hinge on it, and there we go. I can push it up and sort of lean it down a little bit like that or have it pop back and stand up like this. I'm being really careful with moving this because I don't really want to break it again. That would that would suck. Anyway, now that the monitor is fixed, I'm gonna show you the computer that it came with. Alrighty, I got my Power Mac G4 hooked up along with our repaired monitor. Picked up a keyboard and the mouse, and let's power it on. I just love that sound. So hopefully you can see the screen. I obviously can't capture a recording of this screen since, well, this video card uses a special ADC connector, and you know, the whole point of this video was to use this monitor, or rather to fix the hinge on this monitor. So, you can see 
the computer boots up just fine. You can see it loading here. Wait for it to, uh, to load. Starting back, and here we go. So, this computer I bought off of Craigslist, so I'm not entirely sure all of what's on here. Looks like they had Classic set up and had it set to boot when the machine starts. If we go to about this Mac, you can see that this is running Tiger. Like I said, it's 807 megahertz power PC. And as you can see, this only has 384 megs of RAM, so I should probably buy some more RAM for this at some point. But as of right now, I think it's fine. Apparently this has two hard drives in it. One is a it's like 80 gig and one is a 60 gig hard drive. And there's a bunch of stuff already installed on here. Photoshop 7, Adobe Reader, PageMaker, Internet Explorer, and a bunch of other stuff. What I should probably do is probably wipe this and just reinstall the OS on here myself. But, as of right now, I haven't done that. It's got a DVD drive, and like I said, it has a zip drive. I do have some zip disks for it, but I'll probably be going over the zip disks in another video. Anyway, I just wanted to show off the monitor, along with the computer that it came with. And now, once this shuts down, I will show you something else you can do with this monitor. Okay, just to point something out, this does have a VGA port on it. So I guess I could have connected to the computer and got a direct capture, but that wasn't the point of this video. The point of this video was to talk about the monitor. So this monitor, besides just being an Apple-only monitor, can be used on anything with this adapter, which is actually bigger than I thought it would be when I bought it on eBay. This is a DVI to ADC adapter. So let's you take this ADC plug, is the only plug coming out of the monitor, like I said. Connect it to this giant box. And then, now, you have a normal DVI plug, a USB cable for the USB ports on the back, and a power cable, since power is sent over the ADC connector. So, let's get this connected to a computer and see if it works. So, we're going to be testing this monitor with any computer. I'll test it with our Macintosh computer. I don't know if this is going to work. I mean, I think it'll work. I don't know if OS X will boot it properly on this, because I think the way it's set up, it boots to 1080p. Now this is monitor can't display 1080p, but we'll see what happens. It hopefully is able to figure out that this is at a different resolution and change to that. So, I want to see if the power button on this can turn this machine on. I'm going to assume it can't, but I want to see what happens. Nothing happens. Kind of what I thought would happen. So let's turn the machine on and see if the monitor turns on and gives us a picture. And look at that. It works. Our adapter here works. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's an Apple product and it was designed for this purpose. Let's see if Clover likes it. Hey, there we go. Clover is here. Our keyboard and mouse aren't working. I have them plugged into the USB port on the back of the monitor. I don't know why that's not working, but let's see if it actually boots up on this monitor. It's kind of neat if it does. There we go. I uh, turned off reverse mode on the Hackintosh, so Instead of displaying all of the text wildly while it's booting, it's just going to display this Apple logo. And this does take a while to boot up. It took a while, but it did boot. For some reason, the mouse and keyboard weren't working with the USB ports on the monitor, so it's loading directly into the computer. But let's see if we type in our username and our password here. You can see. Machine works. This is our Xeon 
is a 3.69, apparently gigahertz, quad core, Xeon, and I just want to see what it says the resolution is. It says it is, huh, actually identifies this as an Apple Studio display, 15 inch, 1024 by 768. That is correct, that is what this monitor is. Neat that it can identify it that way. I'm not sure why the USB ports on the monitor aren't working. Could be this keyboard or the keyboard extension cable that I'm using on it. Or maybe the USB ports on the monitor support keyboards that support other USB devices. Not sure. So what I am curious about to see if this the eject button works. Interestingly, it does. An Apple keyboard plugged into a Hackintosh functions as you would expect a keyboard to function on a computer. That's pretty neat. So, that is our Apple Studio display fixed with a new hinge and our Apple ADC VBI adapter, which works. Now, I don't know what I'll be using this monitor for. I'll probably only be using it with the Power Mac G4 as this Hackintosh looks a lot nicer in 1080p, but even for a 15 inch 1024 by 768 monitor, this actually looks really nice. This gives a really nice picture. So, anyway, that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.